This is a fairly large truth table. The point of it is to show that this Boolean expression and this Boolean expression are equivalent. Not B or A and C will always equal this expression. Not A and B negated and B and not C negated. You can confirm this by noticing that this column, which corresponds to this expression, and this column, which corresponds to this expression, have the same values. You should pause the video and make sure that it makes sense to you and that you yourself could create this truth table if you had to. However, what will be shown now is how to show these expressions are equivalent using the logical identities we learned in a previous video. This sequence of operations will constitute a proof that this expression is equivalent to this expression. I will be using justifications for each step, and the level of detail will be a bit more than is typical necessary since this is one of the first proofs you've seen of this type. I will start with the more complicated expression. Not A and B negated and B and not C negated. I want to simplify this expression using the laws from the previous video. Hopefully you can see that De Morgan's law can be applied to both of these sub-expressions. This sub-expression transforms into not not A or not B and this sub-expression transforms into not B or not not C. The uh, two applications of De Morgan's laws. I put the name of the logical identity I'm applying at the margin of the expression. Now, we have two variables here with double negations. We're going to remove those using double negation law. So we'll be left with A or not B and not B or C. And double negation is the justification. The next step I'll be doing is an application of the distributed law, distributive laws. However, the form of the distributive laws you saw in the previous video was a bit simplistic. I'm going to distribute this expression across this expression the same way that you would FOIL variables in an algebraic expression. So I'm distributing multiplication over plus, or rather, and over or, and the result is that I have A and not B, or A and C, or not B and not B, or not B and C. This is simply repeated application of the distributivity laws, which once again is similar to foiling, like so. Now from here, I can go forward and eliminate, or rather reduce this repetition of not B to simply one occurrence of not B. 
the law that allows me to do that is idempotence. Which says that if anything is anded with itself, it is equivalent to itself. Now, the next step is to rearrange things in a form that will make it easier to simplify things further. It may not be completely obvious why I choose to organize things in the manner I do, but when I'm finished, we'll work backwards and see why this step made sense. So I'm going to reorganize this expression so that I have not d over here, then I can also flip the order of the individual terms here, so I can have not b and a, and here I have not b and c, and then finally a c. This is simply multiple applications of commutativity. Specifically, I swapped the a and the not b, and then I took that whole expression and moved it to the other side of not b. So this expression moved here. This ac moved to the end. This not b came over here, and this not b and c came over here. So all of the components are still present, simply reorganized. Now, the reason that I wanted to put the not b and a or not b and c together was so that I could use the distributivity law again. What I'm going to do is take the not b out in a manner that looks similar to factoring. So I'll have not b and a plus c. So this is the distributivity law again. And it's worth pointing out that if you don't understand any of these individual steps, you should look closely at the definition for the logical identity and make sure that you see how it can make sense. So here I've factored out the not b. Now, I want to eliminate all of this expression because I'm working, remember, towards this one. I want to show that this expression and this expression are equivalent. So what I'm going to do is add in a 1 next to this not b using the identity law. So remember that these laws can be used not only to simplify expressions, but to make them more complex. So I introduced an and one where there wasn't one before. All of the laws go in both directions. So now that I've done this, I can factor out the not b again, leaving me with not b, and 1 plus or, or A or C. Then I still have this or A C at the end. So this was distributivity again. So I factored out a not b to get to this point. 
I introduced a 1 using the identity law, and then I factored out the not B again. And here is the payoff. 1 or with anything is simply 1. That's a domination law. That will allow me to eliminate this whole expression, this whole sub-expression. So let me continue the proof over here to have not B and 1 or a C. So this is justified by the domination law, or one of them. Specifically, 1 or A or C, or really 1 or anything, is simply 1. So this whole sub-expression was reduced to 1. Now, I can use the identity law again to get rid of that 1. And I'm left with the expression that I was working towards. So this form of proof is known as a linear proof with a justification for each step. And each of the justifications is one of the logical identities, one of the laws of Boolean algebra.